back with author, blogger, and animal expert, Dave Mizajewski. David has a passion for everything that crawls, swims, climbs, or slithers around. And he's brought a few more of his exotic friends with him to meet me today. So what <laughs> are we holding here, David? We have one of my favorite animals, a little cutie. This is a hedgehog. And just like the just like the python, the hedgehog is albino. You can see those red eyes. Yeah. Means it just you know it doesn't have any pigment in its skin. And if you want to gently touch, you can feel that the modified fur is forming those spines on the back of wow. this animal. This is an animal that um, is you know on the menu for bigger predators. And so um, what they can do is roll themselves into a ball. And any predator that tries to take a bite out of that is going to get a mouthful of hurt. Oh, my so, goodness. So um, his name's Snowball uh, because he rolls in a ball and he's albino, so he has no, uh, no pigment in him. But why don't we bring out our yeah, next animal? Yeah, what you got next. Now, okay, so I'm with the National Wildlife Federation. Yes. I'm all about wildlife conservation. Mm -hmm. But I decided to bring another really cute animal. And this one is not a wild animal. This oh one is a domestic bunny. And goodness. Yeah, so this is Zoe. He's a lion-headed rabbit. This is a domestic breed that has this crazy furry mane. Oh and if you want to grab um, and some of those pellets there, um, he might actually eat for you. But, you know, <laughs> you know here's the thing about rabbits. Um, if anybody out there has a pet rabbit... Want, you, want a little piece there, Zoe? See. Want some, Zoe? Yeah, I think he's Zoe's probably... Zoe's like, I'm good. A little Sorry. nervous for the camera. But if, if anybody out there has a pet rabbit, you know that they have incredibly sharp nails. Oh. So that's why I'm being careful with them, because <laughs> when they kick with those back feet, let me tell you, they can, they can do some damage. So even oh for a cute, God. furry, you know, pet animal, um, you know, they still have the equipment that their wild ancestors right. had that helps them survive. And so, so they just naturally grow all this hair? Yeah, you know, again, it's just like a dog breed or a cat breed. These guys oh, have been right. bred by humans for, you know, thousands of years to develop, um, you know, comfort being close to people, but yeah, I mean. We love Zoe, don't we? Yeah. Zoe's pretty cute. I will oh say gosh. this though, um, you know, a lot of people like to get rabbits as pets, mm -hmm. and they do make great pets, but they're not, um, they, they live for over 10 years. Oh wow. So it's a commitment. So if you're thinking about getting a rabbit, mm -hmm. adopt one from a shelter. There's plenty that are out there that need good homes, and make sure you know that it's a big commitment. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, all right, we have one more animal. This, this animal is called a paca. You got him? Run, Zoe, run. <laughs> And we're gonna get him situated. Oh, snap. All right, let's get him some food. You can get him some want? banana right there. He's actually, um, he's very similar to a guinea pig. Yes. Uh, these guys right. live in South America. I'm pretty sure he's looking at me. He, he, oh, he's looking at you. You're you feeding looking him. looking at so me? You're his new best friend. Um, yeah, these guys are, are rodents. They live in South America uh -huh. and they're semi aquatic. So wow. they can go underwater, they can hold their breath for a long time. So um, hiding underwater is one way they escape from, from uh, predators. Th these spots along the, the coat here also do that. Because if you're in the jungle, it's pretty dark, and then there's little dapples of light from the, coming through the tree canopy. And so all these little spots that he has and stripes kind of mimic that look. Well, I'll tell you, this thing is quite a dainty eater. Yeah, well, you know what? The other thing, speaking of eating, is that this is an animal that is, um, has coprophagic behavior. Which and is? that means that he eats his own poop. And so, ah. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that it's totally normal, and that way they extract all the nutrients and get the, you know, the most bang for their buck, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you saved a very special treat for last. Yep. Who is coming out next? We have a beautiful, beautiful carnivore. A cheetah is coming out next. Let's bring out Masika the cheetah. Wow, that is one beautiful creature. Yeah. You ready to go meet her? Yes. All right, so we're just gonna approach the table slowly because she is a predator, she is a carnivore. Now these guys live in Africa. We can come a little bit closer. I'm going slow like <laughs> you told me. They're an African species, they're endangered. Their habitat is being destroyed. Um, they're hunted for their beautiful spotted coats. Mm. So we really need to get together and conserve these animals. We need to protect their habitat and make sure we have a, a, a world where these animals continue to exist. Wow. So right. cheetahs are, are famous because they are the fastest land animal on the planet. This animal, when it sprints, can run over 60 miles an hour. That's, I mean, when you consider that a human sprinting, even the fastest humans can only go, you know, 10 or 12 miles an hour, it's pretty amazing. Uh, cheetahs have a tough time, not only because people are destroying their habitat and overhunting them, but because they're sort of the low big cat on the totem right. pole. Right, they got the lions. The lions, the leopards, the hyenas. Yes. Anything, all of those other, <clears throat> excuse me, African predators 
are much bigger than cheetahs. Yes. And so they actually have to do double duty because they lose a lot of their kills to right. those other predators. So the less pressure that we can put on their populations, the better. Can you touch this one, Dave? How's she doing? You think we can, we can pet her? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear her purring. Really? If you want to gently come up, and you can gently touch her on the back here. <clears throat> cheetahs are the only big cat species that can actually purr. Can you hear her purring? That means that she's happy and contented. You can just gently touch her. She, she'll, she's not gonna freak out on you. Oh, See that? So <clears throat> soft. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I touched a cheetah and I liked it. <laughs> David, you know, thank you so much. You're welcome, thanks for thank having me. Thank you so, so much. This is one of the most amazing things that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> but thank you for coming here and teaching us about these animals, these wonderful animals. We'll be right back. Very quiet.